So I'm here live with Crawford. I don't know how to say your name. Angle King. Is Engel that right? King. Angle King. And uh, so Crawford came up to me after one of the things I was doing. And we were talking. I was like, man, I know, I, man, I know, I know you from somewhere. I don't know. And then I looked down. He came by the booth. I was talking with Eugene and Howard from ESCO, uh, which, by the way, if you want great training, ESCO Institute, great place to go online. Uh, but so I looked at his tag and it says HVAC school. And I'm like, hey, this is kind of like stealing my my business or whatever. <laughs> and no, it turns out that I that I stole his business. So HVAC school dot com, not HVACR school dot com. That's actually Crawford's. That's your business with your dad, right? Is that yep. is that how that works? Yep. Yes, sir. VR yeah. makes all the difference. It does. Right? And if you go to the website right, right now, right. don't be impressed. It won't blow your socks off. Yeah. It was the first one when the internet was created. It was the, literally the first website ever. Yep. And all yeah. we do is change the dates. And unfortunately, well, fortunately, um, we're so busy with uh, the actual classes we teach. I haven't had to find uh, the time to uh, actually go in and update it, mm -hmm. revamp it. So basically, if you want pictures or any like videos of what we'd actually do, uh, HVAC underscore school on Instagram okay. is uh, kind of like it started out originally as a place for me to put good pictures yeah. for the new website. Um, but eventually, you know, hopefully I find the time to do it. Yeah. So you need to follow. So anybody who follows me at HVAC school, you know, I, you know, it's like HVACR school. And then on Instagram, I think it's HVAC school. I don't know. But HVAC underscore school. You got to go follow him on Instagram because his school. So this is what I want to hear about. It's in mm -hmm. Washington. Um, people fly in to take this course, but tell me about like what the course contains because it sounds like exactly the type of course that I've been wanting to promote and talk about. Oh, certainly. So actually, um, I listened to you guys' podcast about the, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly of the trades, mm -hmm. and I was doing it while painting a ceiling, which is if you ever painted a ceiling, a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, I love it. It's my favorite pastime. Oh yeah, <laughs> and at the end of it, they're like, "All right, describe your ideal trade school," and uh, you're going back and forth with Ty and uh, was it Eric, Eric? Kaiser? Yep. Yeah. And like, okay, have a lot of hands on. It wouldn't be long term. It'd yep. be fast paced. It'd be work related. And I'm like, oh shit, that's literally what I do. Yeah. And so the school was started originally uh, 1988. My father, who was a uh, multiple engineer, mechanical, chemical, um, is also like partially uh, accredited for architecture. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, big shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, good luck. So he he actually started his own uh, company and used to be a Votech instructor. Okay. And after a while, started his own school. So what we focus on is hands-on training. You know, you only retain about 10% of what you hear. Yep. You retain about 80% of what you do. Yep. So take that model, put it on its head, say, what's the fastest way you can deal with the labor shortage, yep. get people in and out, get them you know, uh, successfully trained for the jobs they're going to. Um, we respect people's time. And unfortunately, I feel like with most schools, the big disconnect is they don't actually respect the student's time. They say, hey, you're here for two years, three right. years, or whatever it may be. Let's get some student loans racked up. But the hard part of that, you have to delay earnings because they're not working. And can you remember what you did you know, a year ago, two years ago? Yeah. It's very little. So all our classes are very, very short, um, but they're all hands-on. So we have a gas furnace troubleshooting class, two weeks of night school for the people in the local area, uh, one week day class. Um, on that course, it's a minimum of 100 service calls on real furnaces that are completely functional. We go in, I have to go through, tear out all the electrical harnesses, rewire them, add faults, tear apart components, um, but you get real troubleshooting experience. Yeah. So in a week's time, you get about two years of uh, no heat calls. Nice. And you have to pass with 100% correct on a, a test furnace you've never been to. Um, pass, fail. Nice. Just like the field. Awesome. And so do you focus more on like the gas heating side or is it is pretty much everything? Oh, we do everything. The gas heating side, we actually had a lot of people come through that were uh, electricians, O1s, O2s. People kind of out of the ordinary because it's really just a electrical troubleshooting course right. taught through gas furnaces. Got it. Yeah. So, so Which is what, like, what mostly it is, right? I mean, if you think about it, I mean... There's a little bit of the combustion side, all that, but the majority of what we're really troubleshooting, and this is true of air conditioning, refrigeration as well, but the majority is electrical and it does need the hands on. Like you got to have meter in hand. Mm -hmm. You got to be able to connect things. You have to be able to understand what your, your trace out circuits, that kind of thing. And it sounds like that's what you guys do. hundred percent. So we start basically with a fundamental understanding. We draw out, we build our own furnace. But when it comes to the wiring side of things, uh, everyone has a, every student gets a wiring board and has real components, real relays, transformers, thermostats, sequ uh, sequencers for electric furnaces, high limit combinations for fan control for a gas furnace. We have, uh, I wish I could show you some pictures of this, but- uh, <laughs> I mean, you, you could show me, but nobody else will see them. They can get, <laughs> just go on Instagram, you'll see it. HVAC underscore school on Instagram. Yeah, I, uh, I finally kind of made a little video of it, but okay, it's not so gonna he, help any of the yeah, listeners right yeah, now. Yeah, that's fine, the, the viewers. He's yeah. showing this to me right now on his phone. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. So like a bunch of different training equipment. I can describe it as a podcaster. Um, just laying it out, kind of separating it out so they can work on it. Um, kind of exactly what I've always thought. Like a lot of times people will spend a lot of money on these really expensive trainers that allow you to like connect things with, with pins and, and that's not realistic for the field. Like mm -hmm. you actually want to see it in its real life um, type of uh, environment. It looks like you've kind of done that, but in a way that people can uh, can assess and actually work on themselves. Hundred percent, yeah. And because like electricity for anyone, it's not like a normal intuitive thing you walk in knowing. It's yeah. difficult, especially for people coming from a career changes. Um, the average age last time we checked was forty three, so we have a kind of an older clientele. Mm -hmm. Um, but we, the way we teach wiring is we actually have real components, real diagrams, and they started by doing basic systems. So we start with a standing pilot on the gas furnace side, and then, you know, a spark proven pilot. Then, you know, you get like a, uh, Honeywell or White Rogers, uh, hot service igniter yep. and you wire it up and we actually have these burner assemblies that fire off. And it's kind of like a stepping stone. Cause once you get the wiring done, instead of tracing it out or writing, it, it's like, Hey, actually just grab the wire, real wires, real components. Granted, it leaves me with a shit ton of work after every class. Cause everything's wired backwards or blown up or burned out. And um, yeah, they actually wire the systems where they work. And then from there, we have these other boards we bring in where once again, they're faulted. So we flip a switch, something electrically reads it different. So let's say you're testing a high limit, right? You're getting 24 volts um, uh, passing through it. Wait a minute, on either side of it, that's an open switch. The switch is compromised, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And then we, we do that with gas valves and pretty much every component of the furnace um, to start the idea of hopscotch troubleshooting, right. going from like a common leg where your voltage comes from through like the R terminal through the thermostat passing through whatever safety relays or uh, circuits you have to the mm -hmm. gas valve, what your readings are, what they should be, what you actually are getting. And uh, we do that a lot. And then we get to uh, the actual furnaces. We have about uh, 24 furnaces right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the side of them, there's a switch box. So if all the switches are turned off, it works perfectly. You switch one of them on, all of a sudden, uh, R to W doesn't connect in the thermostat. Right. Switch two, uh, pressure switch doesn't close. Right. Switch three, inducer motor doesn't close. So it gives real world application and the reader, uh, the meters actually read the fault as you would see in the field. It makes it nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. It reminds me a lot of like that. That's the reason why I have HVAC simulator here with me in the booth is because they they're taking electrical troubleshooting and putting it right onto something that you can actually take measurements on. So it's like taking measurements on a schematic, mm -hmm. but you're doing this in a very real world, very tactile type of environment. And I think it's great. So I wanted to basically just talk to you. We were joking around because <laughs> when I first started HVAC school, I imagine, you know, you and your dad looking at like, who the heck are these guys stealing my name? You know, because you guys have been around since what, like the early 80s? Is that right? Yeah, uh, I think it was, he's, he had, uh, 88 was the trademark, I think, for the name or 85, something like that. But it was yeah. before my time. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, no, but like I guess a huge fan. I think your, your stuff is fantastic. I use it all the time. So it's like I tell everyone, you know, it's great material. Um, I think we're playing. We're both kind of uh, you know, big hitters in different fields or different yeah, sports. Yeah. yeah, different sports. Yeah. So which which sport am I? Uh, well, because I'm kind of the uh, the market on the, the hands on. Okay, so I'm more like I'm more like um, um, like golf. I'm a little more like uh, sophisticated curling. No, no, more like <laughs> curling. Uh, you know, where it's just it's it's not as physical. Um, you're more like um, let's see, maybe I'd be more like horse racing. You know. <laughs> That's it's possible. Um, or I'm the jockey, uh, and you're more like uh, rugby. Yeah, you know? something, something yeah, along physical. Those lines. Yeah, okay, it's good. I like feel you're much more refined and you know eloquent about it. What we do is uh, obviously it's it's very effective in how we teach it, but um, it, it's very much to the point. And yeah. uh, I mean, for example, we still use the same website from when the internet was created. Yeah. So, I think everybody should go um, go to hvacschool.com and check it out. What we're talking about it is. What, what we're gonna it's vintage i think i think at this point i don't think you should change it i was actually i actually had a, like it's very funny you bring that up for the longest time because you already have your website and it's, it's great and you're very very you know amazing what you do i was like well i can't really compete with that nor do i want to it's not my uh, my field of interest right mm -hmm. i'm just gonna keep the original website the dates still work if you want to see what we're doing check out the instagram yeah um because as you imagine if you have 25 people all wiring something or testing furnaces they're blowing up left and right yeah. and it's like oh wow that took me 80 hours to build and it just blew up <laughs> right so that's what you spend your time doing is like yeah I, I, yeah 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 i like it so, no that's awesome yeah so for hands-on training look them up um hvacschool.com if there's anything else um maybe they want to shoot you an email or something is there a good email that they could contact you uh hvac school at hvac school.com or hvac school at hvac school or comcast.com okay something like that all right yeah there you go hvac 
okay, HVAC school at HVACschool.com. That's pretty straightforward. I yeah, like that. yeah. Awesome. We're clever on that one. Yeah, I like it. Original, maybe. Yeah, yeah. All right, Crawford, nice talking to you. It's uh, been great connecting. And for anybody who's looking for that kind of hands-on experience that we were discussing on the podcast, Crawford and his dad are the guys to, guys to talk to. So. Yeah, thank you. And awesome. Oh, yeah, one last plug. We do uh, air conditioning and heat pumps and ductless systems as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. You were showing me the ductless systems. That's great. And that's actually <laughs> really, really a big need. It's a lot more yeah. training on that. Part. We have a bunch of, like, the uh, the verb is broken down in the internals, and we dive into that pretty heavy. Um, yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank nice, you. Nice meeting you.